Is Lecrae becoming Catholic? The answer to this question is probably not, at least not yet. But I think there's some interesting things in a recent video he put out about deconstruction that may give us some signs of hope. And you see this a lot of times when you see Protestants talking about different aspects of the church when they start to come up with their own issues and um, complaints about Christianity, modern day Christianity, especially evangelicalism. And this video, I think, points out a lot of those kind of common complaints that they have or common criticisms. Now, what's interesting is you can complain about these things in two ways. And he does both of these at different times. And I think even in this video does both of these. One is you can complain about modern day evangelicalism and say that it's too judgmental. It's too harsh that people say you have to go to church. You have to do certain things and you don't have to do that. And he does point that out. He talks about these things a lot, basically eliminating any type of rules or morality or any actual structure to religion or faith in Jesus or following Christ in your life, that it really can just be about, and he says this multiple times in this video, that it's just about loving Jesus and surrounding yourself with people who love Jesus. Now, if you read the Bible, you know that there's more to avoid and more to actually do than just saying that you love Jesus or even just actually loving Jesus in your heart, but that loving Jesus actually calls us to do things. And this isn't going to be a podcast on the Catholic understanding of justification, but rather talking about how um, Lecrae, I think, is hitting at some of the truths that we find in the Catholic faith. The other extreme that I think uh, Protestants tend to do or evangelicals tend to do, which is what I think he also does in this video, is complain about the fact that modern day Christianity has devolved so much from what the original Christians did. And so he's he's going to complain about evangelicals, and I think a little bit to an extent about religion, which is usually considered Catholicism or some of the more organized, you know, Presbyterians, Anglicans, Lutherans, the more organized Christian denominations, if you will, the more institutional ones. Um, but he's also going to complain about that a little bit, about how far we've gotten away from what the original Christians did. And so I want to take a look at a few clips here from the video and just kind of give some commentary on those. So. Let's take a look here at one thing he says I think is really interesting, just pointing back to early Christianity. And to um, uh, um, a multitude of peoples, like there's different people who can give you an alternative perspective of a, of a more of the ancient Near East perspective and less of this like Western, exceptional, like American America Jesus that we've built. Now, we one of my favorite of things that a uh, good friend of mine, um, Christopher Quinn, if you know him on Instagram, uh, Chris Quinn, he often points out is that only Protestantism is, is really a white man's religion, right? Catholicism, we trace our roots back to the Middle East. We obviously moved basically the headquarters, you could say, of Catholicism to Rome. But Catholicism throughout the ages has been multinational. You have uh, very strong churches in Asia. We have very strong uh, Catholicism in Africa right now. Africa might be the hottest, uh, the hotbed of Catholicism right now. It might be the hottest place. We obviously have tons of Catholics throughout all of South America. And then there's lots of Catholics in the West. There's Catholics in India. There's Catholics in the Middle East. We have them everywhere. There's really not, you know, any denomination. If you think of like Elevation Church as its own denomination, they don't have, I mean, they have people around the world to an extent, right? But not nearly the diversity as you find in the Catholic Church, the saints that we have in the Catholic Church of all nationalities, literally almost every, I mean, I, I would guess that almost all nationalities, all ethnicities at least, are represented in the Catholic faith um, in the saints. And so that I think is something that's really interesting. This idea of this like America Jesus, um, do Catholics fall into that? Some, yes, but I think that's more of like a Southern Baptist Protestant thing uh, where you have these white people that basically just associate Christianity with being American. Uh, there is something to, I think, being conservative that is tied up in a sense with Catholicism, at least that leans itself. You know, Catholicism, I think, leans itself towards being more conservative because of things like pro-life, the stances on marriage, stances on gender, um, some of these basic truths that, you know, overlap between conservatism and um, Catholicism. But we are at least able to recognize that the American system is not perfect um, because we know what the church teaches, right? And that there is no institution on earth that's necessarily perfect. Okay, now this might be my favorite part. My God, my mother-in-law, she makes the most amazing collard greens you've ever tasted. They're delicious. The reason why they're delicious is because she sticks to the recipe that was handed down for generations to her. Now, 
if you take her recipe and you decide to add raisins, it's no longer the recipe that was handed down for generations. It is actually now an atrocity and should be uh, kicked out of every home it's ever been brought into. There should be no raisins in these immaculate collard greens. But that's what we've done with this faith. We have a faith that's been handed down from the ancient Near East for generations. And then we started instituting all these random things in it that were never meant to be. You got Constantine dabbling in it. You got, you know, the Americans, the, okay. All these different people. <laughs> very, very interesting there. So I, I love this, right? You get to see him talk about how we have this recipe that's been handed down. This is what we call tradition. Um, obviously you have scripture and tradition in the Catholic faith. This is what is known as tradition. This is when you start to comprehend and understand that, wait, actually, the canon of Scripture was not left to us by Jesus Christ, that we actually had people, what we call the church, the Catholic church, that decided on the canon of Scripture, what books would be included, what books would be excluded from that canon of Scripture. And then even then, you didn't have widespread sharing of the Gospels or, or Bibles around um, for over a thousand years, right? There wasn't the printing press. The printing press, we had mass illiteracy. People couldn't read. Um, and so you had these traditions that were passed down, word of mouth, in writing, and taught by the faithful, taught by the bishops and the priests throughout the years, and confirmed and clarified throughout time as needed by the councils and by the popes who helped us to understand what these things meant in our time. And so this is exactly right. I mean, his example here of the collard greens, when you start to take things away or you add things to it, that can make it really bad. Now he only, you'll, you'll notice, only talks about adding raisins, right? This idea that we added more things over time. And this is going to be the, the criticism of Catholicism, not the criticism of Protestantism, which just over time continued to take things away until all you had left was the cabbage, right? Like all you had left was the actual greens themselves. With no cooking, no pre preparation. It's just the actual most bare, watered down version of Christianity you can imagine. The last thing you have is the actual like main ingredient, right? And, and they say, oh, that's enough. And it's like, no, that's not actually the, the beautiful, tasty, delicious um, fullness of the faith that we were meant to have. What another thing that's interesting, I think, in this you're going to see a lot, I think, with uh, black Protestants specifically, is he says, "Oh, Constantine dabbles in it. America, you have the Americans. It's all, why do you jump to the Americans, dude? The American Church didn't exist. I mean, America's only been around for 250 years. So what are we talking about here? That Americans are? <laughs> it's just this constant like need that I feel like Protestants have these mainstream kind of." you know, cool, hip Protestants that can't say anything really conservative. So they always have to dabble in the, um, you know, liberal ideas, ideologies that he has to say, oh, yeah, America, these Americans got in there. And it's like, dude, where did the what, what are you talking about? Where, where did the Americans come from here? This doesn't make any sense. All right, let's take a look at one more clip here. Instruction is getting rid of all those excess ingredients and getting back down to the original recipe that was handed down 2000 years ago. That tastes good. Deconstruction is not a bad thing as long as you're not getting rid of Jesus, right? It's not a bad thing. It's getting rid of perceptions and perspectives that have been given to us culturally and, and saying, I, these are not necessary. Now, they may be good, right? But they're, but they're not absolutes. I love traditions. I hate traditionalism. So I think we got tradition. Really, there you kind of have it, right? The, the question that most Protestants won't answer, that we never hear Lecrae answer, and I think if you watch this entire video, you get to see this a lot when he talks about his own journey with deconstructing, is this concept of, yes, we need to go back to the very beginning, and we need to be able to see what the actual early Christians did, how they practiced, how they lived their faith. And another point in this video, he compares uh, modern day China, right, where Christians are persecuted, to the early days of the Christians. Now, yes, because Christians were persecuted, we in the Catholic Church, a lot of you know times today, we call this the difference between living in Christendom, which is times where Christianity is flourishing, it's kind of in charge, and so Christianity is legal and great, and most of the culture is Christian. And then you have times of the apostolic age, which is what we call that the apostolic age because of the early stages of Christianity, the early apostles were living in this time of persecution. And so people in China might be living in the apostolic age, while people in Poland or Hungary, right, today are living more in a culture of Christendom, even though it's on the decline. But you kind of understand the difference there. But to compare only the
to compare the church in China and say that that should be the standard of what all of us do, because in China they're meeting in caves and in apartments and under lock and key and secretly, that that's what we should all do. We should all just have house churches. It doesn't necessarily make sense. That's not that's not a really solid argument as to that's what we should all be doing because the the Chinese Christians are imitating the early Christians. It's like, yes, but they lived in a different time and place. And so this idea that things are being added or things are being taken away and some of it's cultural and some of it might be good, but it's not necessary. The question that you always have to ask Protestants is who gets to decide what is good and what is necessary. For us Catholics, it's the church. We trust the authority of the church because we believe rooted in scripture that Jesus gave authority to the Catholic church to tell us, basically, you know, define for us what Christianity is, how we ought to live, to interpret the scriptures and to apply it to our current time and age. Not to be changing and evolving and adapting to the culture and the times, but as more things come out, as more heresies arise, we're able to clarify what the church's stance is on certain things and what we as Catholics ought to believe. And without that, everybody just becomes their own pope. You often hear Protestants say they don't believe in the pope, but to Lecrae, he just gets to be his own pope. He's out here talking doctrinally. He's not sharing any sources or citing anybody else. He's saying deconstruction is good as long as you don't lose Jesus, which is what a lot of people do. That's the essence of what Protestantism has become over the last 500 years. It just boils it down and waters it down until you just have this bare minimum of, oh, I just have this relationship with Jesus and I'm good. But it's like, that's not what the early Christians believe. And if you go back and you read these early Christians, these early Christians that he keeps referring to, but you ignore uh, Augustine, you ignore Origen, you ignore some of these very, very powerful church fathers that we revere as saints in the Catholic Church, then you're just kind of picking and choosing the ones that fit your agenda, that fit the things that you believe. You're picking out these little quotes that might support your new version of Christianity and whatever, you know, refining or deconstructing you want to do. But the early church believed in confession. The early church believed in the Eucharist. The early church believed in the authority of the Catholic church. And so to deny that is really just to kind of pick and choose and become a cafeteria Protestant, if you will, where you're just kind of taking what you want that supports your agenda so that you can be your own Pope and have your own doctrine and dogmas that you create and come up with and either find your own sources or you don't. You just point to videos like this and say, Lecrae's my favorite Christian rapper. He says, it's okay if I just have Jesus. I'm going to stop going to church. As long as I have friends that are Christians, I'm good. All these other things are good, but they're not necessary. They're not absolutes. Who gets to decide that? Lecrae or the church?